not in Kansas anymore. You have my curiosity. Are you telling me you built a time machine? The force will be with you. Welcome back to the Get Real podcast, the podcast where we get real about all of our favourite pop culture, movies and TV shows. With me as always today is my Blue Crystal Cook (laughs) co-host, okay, the Aaron Paul to my... Uh, What's his name? (laughs) (laughs) Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. (laughs) My Jesse Pinkman to my Walter White, Chris. Hey! (laughs) Let's make some meth. <laughs> don't clip that and send it to the police. No, please. <laughs> we'll shut this. You don't know where we live anyway, it's fine. No, we'll be shut down before we've even started, Chris. Mm. Fifteen episodes, well, 14 episodes in and we're done. Yeah. The Rosses are on to us. Well, the podcast isn't earning much money at the moment, so we may as well start making meth. Yep. Okay. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's move on. So, yeah, today we're talking all about El Camino and then a little bit of a retrospective on Breaking Bad. From... And a little future perspective, maybe from you on Better Call Saul. Yeah, for sure. So, basically, the whole Breaking Bad universe kind of in Breaking this episode. Breaking Bad saga. Breaking Bad, Breaking Good, Breaking News. Whoa! <laughs> He's on it today. <laughs> Sam is on it. <laughs> So, should we get it rolling with the fact that Mark Ruffalo is set to return as the Hulk in She-Hulk? Yeah, so there's a bit of a rumour on this. Um, mm. He's redoing his appearance for... That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. You can't really have She-Hulk without having a bit of the Hulk. No, no. And I, I really Otherwise like Otherwise it would just Ruffalo. be She. Yeah, and I think it'll just help tie it together with the um, the you know, the MCU yeah. and stuff. It'll just give you that little bit more of a... An overarching... I don't think anyone's been cast as She-Hulk yet, have they? No, there's been favourites no, and a lot of no. fan fan, yeah. fan casting. A lot of people were saying Rosario Dawson for a long time, but she was previously in the MCU Yeah, uh, on the Netflix series, but we don't know if they're still really part of everything at the moment. I think most of those characters are going to come back as soon as like the three-year gaps ended from them being on Netflix and they can use them on Disney Plus again. Yeah, for sure. I think... Like definitely, like the Punisher and Daredevil will come back. They're the favourites. Yeah, I hope so. Because I really liked. Um, what's oh my God, what is it with me and Charlie Cox names? is no John Berthold John Berthold. as um, the Punisher. Yeah, Frank Castle. Yeah, he was sick. Brutal. Yeah, absolutely. And Punisher brutal. season one was sick. Yeah, it was really good. To be honest, both Daredevil season two was sick. Both see, we only had two seasons of the Punisher, didn't we? Yeah, I haven't finished the second. Oh, both seasons were really good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that was going to be a Disney Plus series. Who do you want to see play? Um, it's a bit of a tough one, really. Because how how do you think they do it? Do you think they do a similar thing to what they did with the Hulk and Mark Ruffalo in terms of like you take his you take his likeness and attach it to the character? See, She Hulk looks a lot more human. Yeah, but, she's just obviously <clears throat> a lot taller than everyone else. The problem that you might have and is green. that you just have this. Well, I mean, it's not the problem because I suppose that's that's who she look she Hulk is. Is she's just a green macho well, yeah. woman, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. built like a. Um, I've built seen like a, a lot of people show. saying Gina, what's her face from the Mandalorian? Oh yeah, yeah for sure. She'll be pretty sure. sick. She's got like the right physique for it, yeah. hasn't she? So. Because she was in Deadpool as well, wasn't she? Yeah, she, um, I can't remember the name of her character, but the, um, the hench, Russian villain. Yeah, yeah, the hench woman. Well, imagine that, but green. That'd yeah. be pretty sick. Yeah, I just I don't know how I feel about it just being that person green. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think maybe it would need a little bit of like some touches of CGI, yeah. maybe just to to make it look that little bit more not like we've just painted a woman green <laughs> yeah make them look a bit more swole yeah i think this this is gonna look really interesting i can't this is one of those tv series where i can't wait to see the first like like a yeah. uh, test footage or what have you yeah also because the they announced a few shows at the same time so they're doing moon knight and uh ms marvel as well yeah who do you want to see play moon knight i've seen a lot of people say shia labeouf <laughs> and that seems pretty <laughs> fucking wacky yeah i don't know give it to someone that's just like a loose cannon, like Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> mate, 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 we're missing an obvious one. Keanu Reeves. Yeah, just you make know it what? Ke- Keanu Reeves as the voice of Moon Knight would be pretty cool. As Moon Knight. like as Moon, Moon Knight, Knight is like, 
hand-to-hand specialist. Yeah, and, in uh, one of his personalities, anyway. Yeah, but also like visually, I suppose that you don't, you won't really see a face, would you? You just see no. whoever plays him, and it'd be like um, it'd just be his voice. But I reckon it'd be it'd be sick. Yeah. I reckon it'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. So confirmed, Keanu Reeves. Yep, okay, Keanu. Cool. Keanu. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Go on, next one. Oh, okay. Uh, there is a... This isn't really movie news, but if you watch the TV show back in the day... It's related. You may have watched or may not have watched <laughs> a Cartoon Network animated series called Samurai Jack. Oh, did you know they brought it back for a final season on Adult Swim as well? Did they? Yeah, so we got a bit snotty at the end. I always felt like every time I watched Samurai Jack, it felt like a movie, but I think that was just like the first time you got like long form animated TV shows because yeah. it was long, wasn't it? The episodes were long. Yeah, like because for, for the time anyway. Yeah, when we were growing up on like Cartoon Network and all them, like it would have a half hour slot and it'd be split into two episodes, wouldn't it? Mm. Whereas it was like a full half hour episode, I believe. And they all sort of flowed like it was a continuing story, wasn't it? Which most of the time, it was just, like, random episodes, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it always had, like, the occasional episodes would, like, link together. Well, that's what like, I'm saying. Like, yeah. uh, most shows were just, like, Freak of the Week type thing, but Samurai Jack was proper, like, one continuing narrative across the entire series, which is why they brought it back on Adult Swim to finish the story. Yeah. Because it kind of ended on a cliffhanger. Well, this video game, I, I don't Woo! even think I mentioned that it was a video yeah, game. Yeah, so it's a hack and slash video game. It looks top it looks so it's still sick. got the adult swim name on it so yeah but the animation gory. style they've gone for looks awesome looks really good the only like, thing they didn't show was um at the end i thought well go watch the trailer for this at the end of the trailer i thought it was going to show the demon at the end in the animation but it just had that 2d uh like long shot of them just yeah. staring each other out i feel like the cutscenes in this game are going to be 2d animated yeah, it might Which just be pulled sick. straight from the uh, the animation. The, yeah, it might just be literally be pulled from the TV series. Ooh, I'm just I think it's my Aku. Aku is the um, the demon in it. I think. Yeah, but yeah, so sick. Can't wait for that. Um, Baby Driver Two is apparently going to happen uh, with the original director and cast question mark uh maybe not kevin spacey no maybe not the full original cast this is what this is why i put it on the news also i haven't seen baby driver still what i know controversial decision did you not come with us when we no you it? all went without me oh chris <laughs> oh i've not watched it since then out of spite I, do i have baby driver it's on netflix isn't it it is on a streaming service i think it's up near the top i think i think you have got it i do Think? We're looking at sham, sham shelves. I don't know. My, I have my DVDs organized by alphabetical order, but I don't see Baby oh, Driver okay. on this. So maybe, maybe I don't. Not. Okay. Um, I would like to see Edgar Wright come back just because I want to see Edgar Wright do more things. Yeah, hundred percent. He's great. It's a very, very good film. It's a very okay. good film. Um, I'm gonna guess not all the main cast make it out of the film, so it's not gonna be the original original uh, cast. I won't lie, I can't quite remember. Okay, I think yeah, I think some get. Does off. John Hamm make it? I can't remember. Okay, I hope I, I hope he did. What I, I hope he did, so he does come back. What I don't remember from this film is the story. I just remember like those crazy action sequences and stuff. The um drive, yeah, the driving scenes, a lot of practical stuff in there as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Up next, you've written Godzilla vs. Kong positive screen test reactions. So I didn't realise they had started production on this. What? I didn't realise production had well, actually started. Well, it's a screen test. It may just be like testing how... Oh, uh, like animation chests. Yeah, you've got okay. to think the Godzilla... Not the Godzilla. The King Kong that we've got right now is a very, very different King Kong to what's going to end up fighting Godzilla, right? Because he's not he's not yeah. to the size. If you have you watched Kong Skull Island, yeah. So in Kong Skull Island, he's, watched it again a couple of weeks ago. I like that film. Yeah, he fights like a crocodile, big crocodile thing at the end, but yeah. not like a, not like a Godzilla level. Especially in King of Monsters, you know, you've got Ghidorah and King yeah, he's Ghidorah massive and, and all that. But he gets he's he's stacked, isn't he? Isn't this version of Godzilla maybe like the biggest version of Godzilla that we've had? Um, uh, uh, no, I think Shin Godzilla in the new. Japanese one, yeah, is the biggest. 
Well, this but is. I like, think this, this is the biggest Western version. Yeah, this is an absolutely stacked Godzilla. Absolute unit. Which means that you're gonna have to give Kong some serious steads to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Get him. Get him up to. So maybe that's what they screen tested. Um, yeah. It's up to speculation because it just says screen tests. I didn't read the rest of the article. Also, what's the lifespan of a Kong? Because that uh, film was set in what the seventies. What's the lifespan of a Godzilla? I mean, I think Godzilla is immortal, or long enough that we can't measure it. But a Kong is. I don't know. A Kong know. could be immortal, right? Who knows? Who, who knows? Who knows? If you know, let us know. And um, yeah, so, so smooth. You're so smooth with your words. Today. I know. I mean, like segways, segways into segways, mate. Built from he's him. a chimpanzee riding on a segway. This guy. Some would say I altered my approach to segways. Oh, into the next segment of about fluid. altered carbon <laughs> season two has just dropped on Netflix. Yeah, we're catching up at the moment with altered carbon season one. So I had never seen it before. So today, before the podcast, I decided to watch it. I watched the first episode and then half the next one. That shit's dope. <laughs> what's, your, what's your thoughts for people who maybe haven't checked it out yet but are contemplating checking it out for season two? I think two? definitely check it out. If you're interested in like cyberpunk world building, yeah. I think the world building is really cool. It's a little bit complicated trying to catch up on the history because yeah. like the series starts and then you jumped 250 years in the future straight away. Yeah, it's a bit... And you're trying to pick, catch up on the in-between. Yeah, it's a bit weird because I, th- I was telling you before that I've... I've nearly finished season one catching up uh, and I dropped off at maybe episode six of the season. So there was like a couple more left. And I think it was just because of a point where it was, it does so much kind of, um, I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to accidentally like spoil it for you or for anyone that's listening to it. Who's probably going to watch. Me. Um, it does like a lot of story building about the past and stuff okay. like that. And there's a bit where it, it kind of lingers on that a little bit for a couple of episodes. Okay. And I'd say maybe that's like the lull of the season is going back and looking at those bits. Yeah. But that's where I kind of switched it off. But I think now that it's come back to obviously the present day and it's done all the flashbacks and everything that yeah. it is it is really cool. I really like Joel Kinnaman in it. Yeah. I the think the world building is just so interested like like straight away, so you have like you find out about the fact that you can be reborn into these new bodies and all that, and then he leaves, and you've got like these like civil rights activist yeah. type thing. It's like, an interesting outside of it's, uh, family planning centers and stuff. Yeah, it's an interesting take on the whole like uh, reincarnation thing, and you start it starts to build up a little bit more about that. But um, have you met Poe yet? No, no. Oh, I can't wait for you to. Not Poe from Star Wars, Chris. Don't get too excited. <laughs> Not Poe Dameron. No, no. Um, and so, you know, in the first episode, there's that um, like bounty hunter guy, the Russian guy. Yes. Who's like double skinned or something like that. Uh, yeah. Um, so, like, when I heard his, voice, on, are you sure you've not met Poe, Edgar, at the hotel? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. He's he's actually meant oh, he's meant to be Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, uh, an AI it was when you were saying Poe didn't Yeah, it. I was yeah. thinking that. Yeah, how have you not met that guy yet? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, so sorry, the bounty hunter who's been double uh, sleeving. So it sounded like Luke, Ev- uh, Luke Evans doing a Russian accent. And then when it turns around, it looks like Luke Evans, only five foot taller and slightly Russian looking. Yeah, man, I've been uh, going through all these sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> I am now Russian Luke Evans. I'm going a bit crazy. <laughs> I am like Luke Evans in in Dracula Untold. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I just thought he looked a lot like yeah, yeah. I figured that out. I was like, oh, the Raven. I was like, that guy looks a lot like Edgar Allan Poe. And then he was like talking yeah. about like the macabre and all that sort of stuff. I was like, yeah, definitely Edgar Allan Poe. Very, very cool series. Yeah. It's very. Cool. Isn't it? I, it's based off a book. Is maybe, it? Yeah. Oh. I think I think anyone who watches like bl- who enjoys Blade Runner would enjoy yeah, this. Yeah, it's very much like a Blade Runner TV series yeah. with a twist, isn't it? It so. feels a lot more like 2049. Yeah, 100%. Than the rest 100%. of them. Yeah. Yeah. Love cool. me some cyberpunk stuff. I wait for <laughs> cyberpunk 2049 or... No, that's the... <laughs> um, emergent, yeah. What is it? 2077? What's the video game coming out by <laughs> CD Projekt Red? Cyberpunk 2077. Is it? Yes. Damn. You were correct. Can't wait for it. 
So we had a couple of trailers as well before we get on to our next things about... Yeah, so I, I'm now naming this uh, segment. We've got our first segment of the show, Sam. We're calling it tra- uh, Trailer Trash. Trailer Trash? <laughs> oh, yes. Right, we'll, Trailer Trash. We'll jump onto some Trailer Trash. Okay, the first one, we got a trailer for the animated film Connected by Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Looks very good. It looked really funny, didn't it? Yeah. Um, the only thing about this trailer is I think it... it I mean, it's not going to matter because it's a fun, it looks ace to film. It looks funny. It looks entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks like a lot happens in it. But I feel like maybe that trailer just shows you too much story-wise. Yeah. I, think, I, th- it's, I yeah. think it showed too many of the jokes. Yeah. But, With the dog licking the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a weird looking dog. Like The jokes seem pretty good in it, but like they nailed it with into the spider verse and stuff like that so i still think they've got probably some stuff up the sleeve yeah I, I i yeah no doubt there'll be surprises and stuff and jokes that we've not seen it reminded me a lot i don't know why do you remember monsters versus aliens the dreamworks I, animated film I do i don't i think i played the video game yeah and never actually play i never actually watched the film but he plays the blob a lot no. yeah the blue blob yeah, yeah back when me and my girlfriend were first together back in the day when we were like teenagers her younger sister was obsessed with that game, and I think I sat there for a full day with her, just yeah. trying to help her finish the game. Monsters versus Aliens. It, it gave me that sort of vibe. Yeah, the animation style is uh, very I know similar. What you mean. Yeah, it looks very good though. Yeah, it looks very good. Okay, so after that, also, um, I mentioned it when we were watching it before. Um, the little lightning bolt earrings and the lightning yeah. bolts on the phone and stuff. It might be a little Phil Lord, Chris Miller nod to the flash maybe well if you think about it like how long animated films like that take to get made they were probably still on board to do the flash when yeah, they started it it would have been a so they were ball. like oh little wink wink nudge nudge and then they're like oh we're not doing the flash anymore never mind just leave the lightning bolts it's fine yeah true okay do you want to do the next one what was the next one my phone's gone off um the hunt oh the hunt i, I wanted you to see what it said in the document I, because i, I, was I did to... and i'm glad that's i think that's why i was telling you to say it otherwise i was going to say a really weird, really rude word we're not australian chris we can't get away with saying that word i was trying to get you i was trying to get you uh yeah it looks really good doesn't it it's a blumhouse film yeah uh was this the a new trailer so we've already had a trailer for this yeah. that we spoke so about last time we spoke a couple of weeks ago we had the trailer that came out last year which was it was the scene inside of the little shop yeah like that was the one i was like you can't do this like because it, it came out the same week as oh um, i remember us talking uh, about this. like a, a mass shooting in america which yeah. is very sad but so the film got delayed and everything and they they've been releasing new trailers because it comes out in a couple of weeks now mm, it looks fair it's very interesting take it's almost like a little bit uh battle royale yeah it looks like battle royale hunger games mixed with uh, the maybe Perch, because it's Blumhouse and uh, I was thinking maybe more like uh, Truth or Dare or You're Next. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You're Next, Defo. Have you seen Truth or Dare? No. Came out last year. Speaking pretty, of Truth or good. Dare, we also watched a trailer for Candyman. Oh, I'm on it with the segues. What's that got what to do going? with Truth or Dare? Because it says it, it's Truth or Dare saying Candyman in a mirror five times, isn't it? Oh, some people days. We there. can't okay. say that. We can't say that word more than five times because there's a mirror. Yeah, right I am looking right in the mirror right don't, now. Don't get okay, freaked. We've out. said it twice now. Okay, no more times. I'm keeping a counter of how many times <laughs> we say it. We got three more. Okay, so we've seen a trailer for Candyman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what did you think of Candyman? Okay, right. We're, we're okay. We're, we're, at, far, we're right. <laughs> well, you're not. You're not looking into a mirror and saying it. So I don't think. I mean, it I could see it out the corner of my eye. Oh, stop looking at it. <laughs> so uh, yeah. we're on. We're on the edge now. We can't say it. We no. need to talk about this trailer so without we, saying the c word again. So we were watching this and. I kind of like looked towards you and gave you that look like <laughs> I'm not going to watch this film with the cinema. <laughs> so the the film starts off and there's like uh, the film the trailer starts off and there's a, like a load of girls saying it in a bathroom mirror and I can see Sam getting really tense oh, like right. like his knuckles were going red from like clenching the side of the chair yeah, it was like not for me something's going to happen here not for me what did you think of the use of Destiny's Child say my name well, you were saying that it should have had the song Candyman in it. And oh! oh! That's I've the fifth it. time. I've done it. You, we're you... going to summon him. If you never hear this podcast, it's because we're all dead. Yeah, 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 yeah you, you dropped me in that trap. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you line me up to make me fall down. <laughs> yep, you're the one that's going to get killed now. You're the one that said it the fifth time. Yeah, well, between us, none of us have said it five times, right? One person's got to say it five times. Mm. So be careful now, because I've not been keeping count. 
Ooh. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, it looks freaky. Yeah. Looks I like how it does. It shows just enough of yeah. the seaman. And, uh, <laughs> the seaman. The seaman. That makes me, that reminds me of that um, Top Gear. Not the Top Gear. The, uh, Grand, the Grand Tour, Tour thing. Yeah. yeah the the seaman. The seaman. Special. Yeah. The, the old seaman special. Have you ever watched the Grand Tour? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very good. I do like it. I like those three together. I'm good. They're not on Top Gear yeah. anymore. Anyway, back to Seaman. Yeah. Like, um, it's yeah. very much sort of like, you're becoming the new one. Well, I mean, like, I think at the end of the original one, Helen became a version of the Candyman. Oh. <laughs> I you'll said hear, it. You'll hear a tapping on that window behind yeah, you. Yeah, it'll it? be the meat hook. Yeah, freaky as though. Yeah. Um, so I think this one's a bit more like, because the way that he keeps coming back is kind of like Freddy Krueger when like people remember when people believe in him. Yeah. Then he comes back and like he, he's stronger. So mm-hmm. I think he's very much like playing off this urban legend and this guy's bringing it back to the forefront. Yeah, the guy who plays Black Manta is the lead in this, isn't he? Yeah, I don't want to butcher his name. I can uh, find out what it is. It's it's nice to see like him in a different role because I don't think he gets a lot of time to really kind of stretch his acting muscles and Aquaman as much. He does obviously have that emotional scene with his dad. Okay. Here he goes. Yahya Abdul Manteen II. The second. The second. The first got killed in Black and <laughs> um, This has also got Nathan Stewart uh, Jarrett from Misfits. Did you ever watch Misfits? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, okay. No. That's a quality show. It's an E4 show in the UK about uh, a bunch of like parole kids doing community service who all get struck by lightning and get superpowers. Very good. Yeah, it was, it was pretty damn good. Speaking of superpowers. Good segue. Um, Artemis Fowl. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about goblins and superpowers, yeah, there was a, a another trailer. Well, a new trailer for Artemis yeah. Fowl. Did you read these books growing up? Uh, no, I well maybe one. No, they were massive in my primary school, but I think I was reading the Lord yeah. of the Rings back then. I f- think that's where I've kind of got a bit of background for this. I feel yeah. like I may have read an Artemis Fowl book in primary school or high school. You dipped your toe in the Artemis Fowl. Yeah, yeah, I've um. Uh, yeah, not enough to really remember the context for the film and stuff and really relate it back to it, but uh, yeah, it looks okay. Yeah, it looks like a Disney Two Worlds Colin Farrell's missing what, film. What does it remind me of? That, um, Moraland. It, no, it begins with a P, Perry, so no. It's, a, it's an Percy under, Jackson? Percy Jackson. It kind of a little bit has that kind of fantasy fantasy vibe to it where it's like a kid. Um, The Spider Web Chronicles, a little flavor of. Yeah, a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, That's the end of Trailer Trash. That's the end of Trailer Trash. There is no doubt a couple of um, other trailers that are out. So there's like A Quiet Place 2. I think a new one came out for that, which is coming out next week. Believe so. Or the week of. Seeing posters all around Manchester for it, so it must be soon. Yeah, or, or the week you listen to this, I think it's come yeah. out. Um, and yeah, that's really that it. A, really, that's really it. That's relevant. Yeah. So, Indiana Jones Five is in pre-production at the moment. Harrison okay. Ford is set to return. Okay. At the moment. Yeah. Um, and also, Steven Spielberg has stepped away from directing roles. Mm, controversial. He's saying that he would rather pass it on to somebody else as the s- franchise is maybe being passed on to a new generation. Which I suppose is fair. Uh, it's not a bad It's not a bad shout. It's like how um, Bob Iger's passing on Disney. To He's a, bobbing out. He's bobbing out. Bob Chappelle is bobbing in. Chappelle. Chappelle. Back in my head. Chappelle. All these bobs are Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle's <laughs> bobbing in as a leader. <laughs> Dave Chappelle is the leader of Disney would make Disneyland so much more fun. YGL, our glorious leader. Um Yeah. Um and apparently James Mangold is the one in talks at the moment to direct it. Oh, this is quite funny because this came up about um Logan is three Logan. years old. Logan. 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 You're three years old, Logan. Logan. Yeah. Three years ago, yeah. that film came out. Hugh Jackman shared a load of screen test images, didn't he? Yeah. Why would Which you have to screen sick. test him? It, it, it was for like the, the older ma- look like the and all the scars and everything. Yeah, yeah. You, you'd be crazy. It's crazy how much CGI was actually done on him for Logan. 
yeah, to go back age him up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hugh Jackman in his what early fifties needed aging up. Yeah, because he looks so young. And he fights. A damn Australian. Have you seen the um, VFX breakdown of him where he fights that clone of himself as well? Yeah. So crazy. So. He was completely CGI. Yeah, yeah. From like the shoulders up was completely CGI. It wasn't even like it was him filming it and they de-aged him. Like they had to stand in and just completely recreated the face. Yeah. And I couldn't tell that in the cinema. No. I, that was sick. I remember when we saw it together and like you first see him mm. and we were like, <laughs> yeah, you've <laughs> sort got of that, taken back by it. You've got that whole famous um, bit where he's running through the forest as well. <gasps> Yeah. 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 All the famous ADR. Yeah. Class. We love a bit of ADR. So good, Hugh Jackman. Right. So speaking of clones. Speaking of clones. <laughs> Sam's on it today. Jeez. Speaking of clones, oh. it came out the oh. the I'm Emperor- having a hot flush from all your amazing segues. <laughs> it's uh come out the the Emperor Palpatine that we got in the Rise of Skywalker is in fact a clone. Definitely a clone. I just assumed that anyway. Yeah, so the idea is... is that I don't know why people were confused by no. that. So the idea was, is the Emperor Palpatine that we have is quite battered and obviously not a full version he's of himself. Old. He's old. From dark he's not magic. fully operational. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so rather than him being a destroyed original Palpatine from falling into the Death Star, it's just a, ah! it's just a cloned version. Uh, which you said before to me that um, JJ Abrams, Abrams has said that he wanted to introduce Palpatine in The Force Awakens as a clone. Now, how would you have felt having Palpatine so early on in The Force Awakens? If they had sown the seeds for it, then it probably would have made everything tied together a lot more. Right. So I watched The Rise of Skywalker again. I think it was last weekend or the weekend before. Okay. And all I could think when I was watching it was how much better the script for Duel of the Fates seemed. Oh. And it really tarnished how much I like that film now. Like, I was watching it and I was thinking, this could have been better. And it's yeah. really upset me now that, like, I've let it all get inside my head and I don't like that film as much now. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? Because it's like what we could have had. But the other thing you've got to remember that will make you feel better is that script probably would have been torn apart and changed in production anyway. I appreciate you trying to make me feel better. Yeah. I do wish that we had that little bit of a scene with the Oracle. Is it the Oracle, that weird alien that's on top of a bab- baby's head? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the weird sort of blobby head thing with it. Yeah, a... yeah um, that was weird. Where... There's a photo. Like a blobfish. There's a photo in the visual dictionary where Kylo Ren's walking over to it, but it looks like it's actually a shot from the movie. Yeah. So it doesn't look like concept art. I'd kind of maybe like to see that. Maybe we'll get it in the deleted scenes. Maybe. No doubt there'll be a, a whole boatload of deleted scenes. Absolute boatload. So, so I don't imagine you've probably read up on this, Chris. But sticking on with Star Wars. Um. If you haven't seen The Rise of Skywalker, skip ahead of like 15... Spoilers, big spoilers. So at the end of The Rise of Skywalker, um, Ben and Ray share a moment before Ben Still disappears into the like Force. don't like the kiss. No? Um, it was actually been revealed that there were some final words between them in that moment because okay. they don't actually really talk. They just share a kiss and smile at each other and then Ben falls over and dies. So rather than it <laughs> being like that, yeah. um, there were final words... Okay. Do you know what these final words were? No, I don't. It was actually in the trailers, and it was no one's ever really gone. It's Apparently, like he knew he was Ray going. whispers that to Ben before he disappears and dies. No one's ever really gone. I feel like if she had said that, we definitely would have needed a Force Ghost version of him at the end. Yeah. Which Definitely. I think we should have got it anyway. But, I know. think they should have just took... You know what? They should have just took a risk on making this film longer. They should have yeah. just made it longer and just put all those extra bits in I mean, in it was there. pretty damn long as it was. Yeah, but I wouldn't It was minded. nearly three hours. It no. was the last one of three trilogies. Yeah. Which... I would have rather had a three and a half hour version of Star Wars rather than three and a half hours of The Irishman. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, they could do it with Endgame, and they could do it with um, Infinity War. They were real yeah. long films, although I think Endgame was probably the longest one. 
Yeah, it was. Um, I think Infinity War was the same length as Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, roughly. They could have endgamed it. Totally could have, could have endgamed, endgamed it. it. Uh, let's check and see if there's any other news before okay, we move on. Okay, so uh, the New Mutants has officially got its rating as a PG thirteen. PG. It was just rated R, so, though. Right? Originally, it was, it was originally rumored to be rated R, and then it was a fifteen, but now it's been brought down to a PG thirteen. Mm. But that's American ratings, so sounds like someone. So it's going to be probably going to be a twelve A for us. It was going to be a fifteen, then it was a twelve A. Sounds like someone's trying to make the most of the box office. Probably. Someone's trying to Disneyfy the new mutants. Yes. Well, Maybe. they said they were going back to sort of like the original cut. They were just trying to get rid of the bits that reference the wider X Men universe. Mm. So maybe, maybe they they were like having some really gory fight with a, a demon bear, and they were like, "Do you remember that time that Logan was old?" <laughs> 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 they had to cut that out so it got rid of some of the gore. Do you remember that time Logan fought himself? <laughs> hey, do you remember that time Jean Grey came back? <laughs> she went evil, killed Cyclops, and then came back. <laughs> do you remember that time everybody needed plastic guns because Magneto kept killing them with their own guns? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the f- and all the time while they're having this conversation in the background there's just people getting limbs torn off oh, and everything goodness me <laughs> and the final little bit of news oh no there's, there, well, there's not final no no not final Chris. James Bond this is hot news dropping today James Bond No Time to Die has been pushed back by seven months due to the coronavirus this is crazy really <sighs> I mean I've got it two weeks or uh, three weeks away from coming out one two three Oh no, a little bit more than three weeks away. It's like One, a two, month, three, four, a bit, yeah, yeah, four weeks away. Yeah. It was due to be coming out. Crazy. And like, I was still seeing like TV and YouTube adverts for it yesterday. Yeah, saying that it was coming out in a month's time, and now it's been pushed back seven months because they want to get the biggest box office records that they can for it. With uh, it being yeah. Daniel Craig's last out in, even yeah. though everyone's his last out in. Has it been confirmed that it is for? the box office or is that the suspicions i think that's the suspicions they've already had to yeah they pushed back the chinese release and cancelled the premiere yeah but now with it spread into other countries and stuff they're pushing it back i think it makes sense i don't think it's anything to do with the production i think you're right i I think this film is completely done yeah because they like we discussed the other week they normally release the song like once everything's done and the film's about to come out as unless, like the big marketing push. Unless Chris, the film has a virus in it and it's just not very tasteful to release. Ooh, maybe. That could be. Maybe. Maybe that's what's making um uh Rami Malik's face character's go face all weird. All weird. Maybe he's got some sort of infection. And if that maybe is, he's got coronavirus. If, oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean if that's what it is, then it is definitely a good move not releasing this film. Yeah. yeah. I will wait. It looks very good. It's not one of those things where I'm like, uh... And we've got... We're about to have quite a bit come out, I think, over the next few weeks. So we've got, like, A Quiet Place Part 2. We've got Mulan. And then you're going to have No Time to Die the week after those films. And then I think in April, uh, we would have started with No Time to Die... Um, but we've also got the new mutants and Black Widow out in April as yeah. well. Well, um, Bl- uh, Black Widow is out first of May here, I think. But it just keeps it further away and towards. Yeah, the end it's of been the year. pushed back to November now. Which, yeah. to be honest, November is typically quite a slow month for releases. It's normally October gets a load of horror films, and then December obviously gets all the Christmas films. Mm-hmm. End of November, beginning of December. Cool. So, Chris, we need to swiftly move on to um, El Camino. But before uh, we move on to El Camino, <laughs> we do have to talk about another type of mobile, a Batmobile, to be precise. So I called you on the way home today, yep. and we both saw a tweet about the new Batmobile, but we didn't look at it because we thought we'd I've, wait. I've and got the images up here ready to look at. Right, Batmobile. Uh, Matt Reeves posted it out, right? Yeah, so Matt Reeves apparently... Has yeah, Matt Reeves posted three images of the Batmobile to Whoa, Twitter. Oh goodness me! <laughs> <laughs> so, Holy moly! Right, so we're... we've got three images. That's the back shot right there. That's... So we're, we're looking at this live right now. Oh oh oh! Are you getting some major Blade Runner vibes from this? 
Yeah. Is that an image? It looks like concept art. No, this is like actually him stood there. So this is very much in the vein of Snyder when he revealed it. Yeah. From the back, this looks sick. From the front, it just looks like Dom, all of Don Toretto's cars from Fast and Furious. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's a Batmobile. It's got like a supercharged fucking engine in the back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but from the front, it doesn't look very much. It just looks like a muscle car, doesn't it? Yeah. Which is an interesting take. I feel like we have had a version like that before somewhere, but I can't remember where. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. It's a bit like the whole bike thing, though, wasn't it? The it I think it very much suits the theme of like the costume and stuff. Like It yeah. looks like he's just enhanced a car himself, doesn't it? You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Knight Rider. It does. It, <laughs> it does, does look... really remind me of <laughs> maybe Knight Rider. It, maybe it talks. <gasps> maybe if it's got Andy Serkis talking to him as Alfred yeah. through it. So do we believe that this Batman in this costume could be Battinson and not his stunt double then? I mean, I would hope they would I mean, get that, Batterson that, that for the big Batterson, reveal. It? Zoom in, enhance. Uh, zoom in, enhance. You know that high tech here <laughs> get real. We can't zoom in on. Twitter. Zoom and enhance. Yeah. I mean, the it looks like the. I mean, apart from this tweet here that says CW called and they want their Batman and car back. <laughs> <laughs> so they're getting roasted already on Twitter. Uh, yeah, from behind, yeah. like this looks like a cool Batmobile from the front. Yeah, just looks like Fast and Furious Batman edition. What's your favourite Batmobile? Between from what, the films, between what you've seen here, the Dawn of Justice Batmobile, and the Dark Knight trilogy Batmobile. Just those three. Just those three. Probably the, the DCEU ones. Yeah, I would say the DC. I'd the, say that's like, a, that looks sick. That is a sick Batmobile. Uh, the Tumblr was. Is really cool, but it doesn't really feel like a Batmobile at all. Yeah, it's just a. I think I'd rate that. It's a bat- bulletproof la- Lamborghini. Yeah, that Bat Cycle would win over the Bat Cycle I've seen for this. Oh yeah, yeah, that Bat Cycle's cool. Well, it's only a matter of time, Crystal. We see. Well, it. it's got. It doesn't have wings. It doesn't have a bat face on the front. I mean, questionably, <laughs> it has wings at the back of it. I mean, look at that. It it does kind of look like his cape. Go to that side profile. I think that's why they got the cape sticking out, just to give you. Sort yeah. of the the feel of a cape swooshing. I don't know, it's cool. It's very noir. It's got big wheel trims on the back, so it is sort of reminiscent of the ones from the Tim Burton films with the big wheel arches at the back. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. Go check I, it out very much very much suits we'll the probably, suit. It should, suits the suit. We should probably post this on our um, yeah. Instagram. I will quote retweet it right now. Very good. So you can check it out there. Uh, And now we're going to move on to our main event, which is the Breaking Bad universe, uh, more specifically El Camino. So as always, I mean, we we try to talk spoiler free and we're probably not going to be able to talk spoiler free for Breaking Bad. I just want to mention that right up at the top now. We're just going to do full spoilers on Breaking Bad because if you've not seen this TV series... What are you doing? It's amazing. Go watch it. Go see it now. Holds up really well, although the first episode does feel really old. Um, it definitely holds up well to go and watch. I've I've rewatched this um quite recently, and it definitely holds up. Uh, and then El Camino. We'll probably try to breeze over the um the main spoilery parts of El Camino, but we will get into it, uh, and we probably will touch a little bit on. Better Call Saul, I suppose. I'll touch on it a little bit, but no spoilers for Better Call Saul. So are... that's the 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 overarching yeah. <laughs> brief. That's the brief. That's the brief. So let's just jump into it. Let's stop briefing. Let's talk about it. So what did you... Have you seen all... You've not seen all of Breaking Bad, Chris, have you? I have. You have? I thought I, you didn't. I finished it to watch El Camino. Oh, goodness me, where did you find the time? <laughs> There simply was no time to die, <laughs> just enough time to watch Breaking Bad. <laughs> just enough time to So I, I only had two and a half episodes left. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, I was when I was re-watching El Camino, where it starts, it starts where Breaking Bad leaves off. Literally, yeah. So I was a bit concerned that when you were going to watch this, that that wouldn't have had any kind of context and made sense, even though yeah. you know how Breaking Bad ends. I, to be but honest, definitely I, helps. I didn't know that Jesse had been imprisoned 
that's the one bit that I didn't know. Yeah, so he was taken um, taken prisoner by, by those neo Nazis. Todd, yeah, Todd and his uh, jolly old gang Uncle of Nazis. Jack. <laughs> Um, and he was being I'm just trying to that. quote retweet the back yeah, real yeah. quick. And he was being kept in that um that concrete prison and that whole yeah. hole in the ground. Um so yeah, I absolutely love the series Breaking Bad. Um I think it is an absolute amazing series. I couldn't really point faults in it. Um I can see why some people don't like it though. I think it's a very, very particular art style and there's always like this trope with Breaking Bad where it starts, there'll be a weird episode. It's like, it's like, like a, a weird, cold open, isn't yeah, it? It's like, like a weird co- Like, I'll give you a really quick example of a recent, a recent example in Better Call Saul. Okay. Um, there's a, it opens with loads of ants eating an ice cream off the floor. Yeah. Where it's like this dead zoomed in shot with loads of crazy sound effects of ants eating an ice cream but it doesn't reveal that it's an ice cream until right at the end and then you have the intro scene and then you you don't see these ants eating and then (laughs) (laughs) right at the end um Saul gets out of a car and the ice cream's there with all the ants eating it and that's it that's yeah. literally what it's Yeah they there always for. manage to tie it together like one of my favorite episodes of Breaking Bad is The Fly Yes absolutely and like that starts off with just like a cold open of just like this fly just fucking about <laughs> It's crazy that that is pretty much an entire episode that whole Yeah it's a little bottle episode but it's such a well made confined story Yeah absolutely Brian Cranston just like like he was born to play yeah. this role. So, like my connection with Breaking Bad is, I loved this back in the day when it was airing and everything. I was all for it, and I was up to date, waiting for the last season to come out. I was like, yeah, can't wait. And then I watched the first two episodes when they went up, and then I was like, I kind of don't want this to end yet. Like I love the show so much, I don't yeah. want it to end yet. I was all on the Breaking Bad hype train. So I was like, right, okay, I'll wait until there's a few episodes and then like I can watch a few episodes in a row. Then I'll wait a bit and watch a couple more episodes. And then I did that. And then about the halfway point of the final season, I just didn't end up watching the rest of it. Like, I think I had waited that long that sort of like the hype had like died down a little bit. Yeah, and I think it, I think this last season came out at a bit of a weird time when... If I'm not wrong, I think The Walking Dead was kind of in its prime at that point. I yeah. think it was like in its in its really like good seasons. Yeah. And I think we had quite a bit in terms of like Netflix, I think was coming around. Yeah, it was a busy stuff. time. Yeah. yeah. Um I think so. it was a busy time for us. I think it was like first year of uni or something. Yeah. Five years ago. How old would we have been? Twenty. So we would have been in our final year of uni. Yeah. No, it would have been yeah, we would have been actually. Wow. Because we would, well, I ended up saying an extra year. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Goodness yeah. me. So I think that's why another reason why I didn't end up catching up on it. We just had too much going on in our lives. But now that I'm, I've watched the final season, so I went back and watched the entirety of the final season. Yeah. Um, And then I had a couple episodes left when you suggested that we do it at El Camino. The final season goes on way too long. Yeah, it, it's... like it has a plot in the beginning and it resolves and you could just put like the bit from the end at the halfway point. But yeah. instead they bring in Todd's family and all that sort of stuff like and Todd killing a kid and everything. Yeah, and like and it just whole... goes on too much and, and the it whole kills the it. whole bit where Walt goes to he goes undercover and then he comes back. You know yeah. what I mean? He goes under that uh I want to say witness protection, but it's not witness protection. That that uh, disappearance guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um the guy who the runs the cleaner. yeah who runs the Hoover shop. Yeah, he sorts like, him out and then he comes back um to help Jesse. Yeah, but, but it kind of just feels like it's setting it up. Just it's setting it up. It for, just drags it out too long. Whereas, so it, I feel like it kind of tarnished how I felt about El Camino a bit because El Camino should have just been the last like two three episodes of breaking bad yeah like i don't feel like it needed to be a film so this so sam uh, was it yesterday or the day before you were there just like oh have you watched el camino yet don't forget to watch it it's like i really want to know what you think and like you quite like it don't you yeah and you're like 
I was like, eh. Uh, <laughs> it was like the only way I yeah. could refer to it because I loved like the first half hour of it. And then after that, it felt like the final season of Breaking Bad where it was just doing stuff that I didn't care about and taking too long. I was like, eh. Yeah. It felt I like mean, it should have just been one episode. Yeah, I, I guess I guess El Camino, I, I mean, we've not had anything Breaking Bad for a while. We've obviously had Better Call Saul, which has kind of filled that niche a little bit. Mm-hmm. But in terms of having those characters, it was really good to see him come back. Did we need El Camino? Definitely not. I don't think we needed to see what happened with Jesse. I think the, I think it was great to have, and it did tie up what happened what when Jesse escaped the the lab and the the Nazis. But I mean, all we're really seeing is him do. Th- three things really just really spread out yeah well escape yeah. get money leave exactly that's what you're watching him do <laughs> you're watching him just really go spoilers through, well, yeah you're watching him go through what walt did basically yeah. so you're not really watching el camino to see anything new i feel like you're watching el camino so you know what happened well and also just to just to have that whole there's lots of really like Obviously, it's Vince Gilligan, right? Yeah. So you have lots of very Vince Gilligan stuff happening, i.e. you'll have like this over-the-top shot and you'll have um, like just these like moments which are very Breaking Bad. Yeah. But it's in a film and it's you don't get that whole cold open and that full circle thing in, in the film, do you? It's I think... So what I loved about the film was like, like I said, the first half hour, like Jesse dealing with PTSD, and like I felt like for Aaron Paul, that was probably like one of the best things he could do. He's played this character for years, but when you're like a secondary character in a TV show, you don't really get to add that much depth and stuff to the character. Yeah. So the character finally like had a chance to break down, like because if you think about it. Like Jesse was just shafted throughout the entire series of Breaking Bad. Like yeah. his girlfriend died, and Walt just watched it happen. Uh, the kid gets poisoned, and everything. Every time, like he starts to care about something, it gets fucked up. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, it's very true. So you and finally that's... get to see him deal with it. And the thing is, is that's where you see Walt at his worst mm. as well. I think the the way he treats Jesse in Breaking Bad is what makes Walt the villain. Not only is he you know, a meth dealer and people die because of not a meth dealer, a meth cook and people die because of that. And because of the knock on effects of yeah. what he does. Um, it's also just what happens with Jesse. I think that was the one. I think that's the most tragic part. Yeah. Of it, you know? I think that's what I'd like. The, the thing that I did like about the final season was the fact that at the halfway point, it did turn and Walt became the villain. Like he got come up and it's like, because you've always been rooting through him, like uh, for him, and you've never really like taken the time to stop and think, this guy's a meth cook, like this guy's a drug dealer essentially. Mm. So he's not a good person. Why are we rooting for him just because he's got cancer and because we see that he's got a family? Yeah, it's like yeah, but other people have got cancer and families, but they're not going out and <laughs> dealing meth, ruining other people's lives. Yeah. So the fact that they were able to go full mm. heel turn on him, and like he became the villain of the final season. Yeah, it's a weird one because also he is he is the villain in the final season, but also he he saves Jesse. And I think what you get is you get there's a turning point with Jesse when his when his girlfriend dies, um who's who plays the Jessica Jones girl. Kristen Ritter. Yes, when when she dies, that's Jesse's big turning point because at that point he was going to leave it all and you know and live a life with her mm-hmm. and i think that's also a turning point for walt where um i think he sees her doesn't he, he sees her choking and then leaves her yeah. or he doesn't save her or something like that really yeah jesse's asleep mind, in the bed and he's gone to get something he's gone to like yeah i think he goes to like find i think he goes to find money or something like that yeah. or keys as she or... starts choking because she's overdosed yeah she's choking on her own vomit and he just kind of walks out and lets yeah. her die. And that's that's like the point where you see him turn and you see that this guy's ruthless and will do what it takes. However, he's doing it for his he's doing it to set up his family. And I think that that's one of the key things of breaking bad is you're watching someone who is doing bad things 
sometimes for a bad reason sometimes he's doing it for a good reason and mm-hmm. it kind of it, it sits you on this like weird line and but especially like, it, it he does say like when it, when he comes back at the end he was like i kind of did it for myself as well because i liked it like yeah he liked having control he liked having well, this power is, like he yeah. liked having money like he had at one point what like 60 odd million like his family didn't need that much no money. and it was there's After that point he where gone. he like um it obviously comes out that he's heisenberg right and he confronts his family over it and it's that point where you start to think and as a viewer you watch walt go through all that and he as he justifies it to other people you kind of justify his decisions as the audience to think yeah he's okay he's doing it but i think when it comes to that part where you get um what's the name is it scarlet is no his skyler skyler his wife yeah yeah you get the point where skyler's reactions uh they're really bad junior's reactions are really uh, flynn flynn's 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 reactions are really bad walt jr walt jr um and obviously you get the whole thing with hank and when uh when hank gets taken out that's brutal Uh, that part is like yeah that's a real i just i wanted him to make it out alive at that point yeah like at that point, I was really hate like the show was annoying me because it was dragging. Yeah, and like Walt was the villain, and like Jesse and uh, Hank were working together to get him caught. At that point, like I wanted him to get caught because he was the villain. Yeah. I was like, just I want Hank to get out of it somehow. And then he's just there, like this guy made his decision ten minutes ago, and then he gets shot. Yeah. I was like. Phew that was heavy and again there's this whole bit where walt is kind of treading like a fine line between like he wants stuff but how far will he go to get it and you know he he watches his brother-in-law get shot by that gang and he watches you know his family fall apart and stuff and jesse get kidnapped jesse getting kidnapped and i think maybe that's what makes him make that turn at the end to go and save him and do do the right thing i suppose yeah to to an extent yeah he did try to like he did try to kind of put things right at the end, like he killed all the, the mercenary drug dealers, the Nazis. Mm. He took out the woman that was supplying uh, methylene, the meth dealers. Yeah. yeah, correct. He saved Jesse. He got the money to his family. Yeah. So he, he did try and put things right at the end. Like, and a lot of times when someone innocent got hurt, you can you don't see Walt's character like feel good about it a lot of times he he's yeah. uncomfortable and he's not he's not good about it the only time that you see him really like you know convinced by what he's doing is when um what's his name chicken shop guy uh gus gus gustavo fring yeah when he dies frame fring um yeah giancarlo yeah Espo- giancarlo esposito's character yep. um, nice <laughs> yeah um, pulled that one out i know you've been practicing that in the mirror <laughs> since the mandalorian this. episode we did <laughs> <laughs> like two like two three four months ago yeah um episode two go back and listen to it yeah i don't know it's it's cool i it's a really like there's it's just such a good interesting series yeah i think you watch the characterization this. is so good yeah They're written really well yeah and also just like visually like Breaking Bad and El Camino have got just some, and Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, to be fair, have got just some of the most interesting cinematography and visual like stuff that you can you see in TV shows. Yeah, that's the one thing that I did like about El Camino was the fact that it looked great. Yeah, like they didn't just make it look like an episode of Breaking Bad. No, no, no. Like no. they were like, okay, we're making a film. We've got the budget. We've got the time. We can make this look amazing yeah i think it did like the shots were really interesting to get you into jesse but everything that i think of that i like was sort of in like the first half an hour or whatever like not to spoil anything but when he's in the apartment where uh, the police go in yeah like after that scene i wasn't really interested in it anymore. oh really yeah that's an interesting bit to not i liked the interested. bit with the vacuum cleaner guy as well yeah, because I thought their interaction was really good, which is just after that bit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's interesting because that point where you're on about where the police go into that apartment, um, it was the bit where I was like, 
oh, okay, we'll see where this is going now. It's a bit yeah. of a twist. So, And then I kind of like where that takes on. I think at the point where he goes to the, vac- the vacuum cleaner guy mm. is the bit where I'm like, right, okay, I can see where this is going now. Yeah. But again, it does it where it's like you're not bored watching it. You, you still... Well, well I feel into. like after that point, there wasn't as much interesting stuff ha- happening and like the camera angles weren't interesting anymore. No. Like after that point, it just felt like an episode of Breaking Bad. Yeah. There's a lot like of... That, that yeah. first section was like really interesting and like like I said, like it must have been great for the actor. Like Aaron Paul must have really enjoyed doing that because it was a chance to explore the character and stuff. And I think the end of that, he didn't really explore anything new until the very last scene. No, I feel like it was just t- kind of after that halfway point, it's just tying up loose ends. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is what it yeah. really does, right? Yeah. So. Like the, the one biggest thing that I had after Breaking Bad series had ended was what happened to Jesse because he just drives away, doesn't he? And you see the yeah. police come to get Walt. Yeah. And that's where it leaves it. Like you get no, no, like no final ending for him you don't know what happens at the end mm. so yeah make uh, like i think they should have just made the fifth season shorter have walt maybe die at the halfway point yeah and have like two or three episodes afterwards which dealing, is el camino basically. yeah doing el camino i think i would have rather had that rather than maybe a film of it yeah i, I agree actually if they yeah. what i was hoping because i couldn't even remember the trailer or anything. I didn't know what El Camino was going to cover. I just remember how, seeing a shot of, I think in the trailer, didn't they have a bit of the tape that Jesse made? Was it? Uh, or am I just remembering some sort of promotional material where they showed bits from the end of season five? Maybe. Maybe. But maybe, anyway, like sure. I remember seeing a shot of Aaron Paul with like his head shaved and sort of like the wounds healed a bit more. And then I saw a shot of police, which the only police are the ones that go to the thing. So I, I in my head was thinking maybe like we're going to jump further into the future and he's like going to be dealing with stuff with the police, like trying to make sure that all the meth labs have been shut down or something. Like like that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted sort of maybe a jump into the future and you see how um, his life's changed since then. Yeah. But instead, they just kind of went back to what was happening at the beginning of season five of him getting the vacuum cleaner guy to get him out of there. Mm, mm. You know what I mean? Like, I was kind of wanted something new from the film Yeah. instead of just season five again. Yeah, that's it. And I think that's what you get. I think that's why when to summarize kind of El Camino, that's why it feels like, it was it was it a film that, you know, that we needed? No, it wasn't really. It could have just been the final season, like you said. Yeah. Um. So you watched this film um, from, obviously, you went from the last episode of Breaking Bad into El Camino. Considering these films are, are actually six, well, the, Five years. the six, six years yeah. difference between them. Yeah. How did that flow for you? Like, was it very fluent going into that? Because I didn't watch. I've I obviously watching El Camino as a throwback. From you going into that last season of last episode of Breaking Bad into El Camino, how did that kind of gel together with the characters? Did you notice many differences, or did you feel like they did a really good job that six years down the line they managed to keep like Mike and uh, Badger and Jesse and Todd and stuff? Do you think that Skinny Pete and everything? Skinny Pete, yeah. Is it is Skinny Pete or Skinny? It is Skinny yeah. Pete? Yeah. Um, do, do you know what? I thought it worked really well to begin with. Like. I thought they were just shots from like outtakes, like you know the first scene where like he's escaping and everything like that. Yeah. I thought they had shot that at the same time as um, the final season because it lines up like those shots are identical. Yeah, like and the outfit looks the same, the wig looks the same, the the scars on the face look exactly the same and everything. Like I thought that would have just been shot at the same time. Like that really worked. It was only then when he got to skinny pete's place that like the camera work changed and the the coloring changed and everything like that like that you felt like it was a film yeah it felt a lot more cinematic and that i really liked the bit that didn't flow quite well was uh is it jesse Plements that plays todd yeah he obviously like in the six years had gone from being like quite a young actor to like he's been in loads of stuff since then he's been in the irishman black mirror stuff like that fargo fargo yeah. um 
Yeah, I, I won't go naming a load of stuff, but he's been in yeah. loads of stuff anyway. I, I've got a shot of him in my head now from a film, and I can't <laughs> think what film it was now. Um, Blade of Fire, Plan. Um, Bridge of Spies. It was in Bridge of Spies. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry, I'm knocking that. Uh, I had to pull that from the depths of my memory. Um, is it Bridge of Spies? Doesn't matter. I can't remember now. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he visually looks a lot different. Like yeah. he's a lot bigger now. He's not like a skinny like early twenties anymore. Like, like he has put on a bit of weight, like mass. Anyway, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to say he's getting chunky. No. It, it might be muscle mass or anything, but he yeah. definitely like he looks strikingly different. And it's meant to be taking place in between like the last couple episodes of Breaking Bad. So that was the only thing for me that really was jarring. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a big jarring part of El Camino is where it goes between um, it goes between flashbacks to... It jumps around the timeline a lot, right? Yeah, with Todd. I'd probably think that it could have just been dive made. into spoilers yeah as well, 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 right okay at this point yeah we're gonna start spoiling the plot and stuff of i mean this film did come out last year yeah for sure but if for whatever reason it's on your radar you're listening to this because you want to see whether it's worth a watch you know what if you've seen breaking bad and if you're watching better call Saul right now and you just want to have a little bit more of a, a little bit more context to the breaking bad storyline go watch it it's definitely yeah. worth, worth it's worth definitely two, like, worth a watch yeah yeah it's worth a couple of hours of your time to watch it just to basically it is very much just a cherry on the top isn't it it's yeah like it's like just it's garnish it's, it's garnish. a side salad yeah it's a side salad to your breaking brad main course <laughs> that's what it is <laughs> yeah it's or like it's, when you yeah. go for a nice steak and they give you some nice chips yeah. with it as well that's all you're really paying for well it's the little bit of side salad on it's the side. like you've had your starter You've had your main, yeah, and then you really, you main. You're really full, but you know that it's part of the set menu, and it's going to cost you more if you don't get the dessert. <laughs> yeah, so you just have it anyway. So you're you a have, bit too full at that point. Yeah, you're a bit. But you just, ugh. yeah, you're going to try it. You're going to try and get the first couple it. mouthfuls are great. Yeah, like the first half hour is great, and then it gets a little bit sickly and tiring, and yeah. you can't quite finish it all. Yeah. That's what El Camino is. <laughs> At this point, we'll get into spoilers, so um, <laughs> skip ahead in the time code or just stop listening to the podcast now because we're probably not going to talk about much else. But um, yeah, so in terms of spoilers, so yeah, this this throws back a lot to um, the Jesse and Todd uh, relationship that you have mm-hmm. um, and how, yeah, there's the, the the whole timeline thing is what we're, what we're about to talk about. There's a bit where um, Jesse's like breaking into Todd's apartment, but he goes through the door, and it's a throw, and then it throws back yeah. when he goes through. The- really fucked me over <laughs> because I was like, "What is going on?" <laughs> See, because like most films and stuff, like like I I was watching Little Women uh, a couple of weeks ago. And told you about it, yeah. And they the color palette is very different between the timelines. So that film is. Um, Sasha Ronan's character is now in like New, uh, I think she's in New York. She's trying to sell books and everything like that. Mm. And it's got a very much like muted blue color palette because the modern days are a bit harder and everything. And she's remembering back fondly the memories of her family when she was younger and everything. And then so when you're throwing back, all the throwback scenes are brightly colored. They've got like literally rose tint into them. Yeah, like roses tinted glasses. So when in this film, they went to a flashback. I didn't notice any difference in color grading or anything. Like typically, shows will do that because it's an easy point of reference that whenever you see the color palette change, mm. you always know you're doing a flashback. Like yeah. in Arrow, say because Arrow uses flashbacks all the goddamn time. Yeah, but it's always a completely different color palette so that you your head's in two different mindsets yeah. whereas this one like you said it just walks through a door and it transitions into a different scene i'm sure it's a cool camera take but it was jarring yeah i'm sure breaking bad did that where they would have uh flashbacks at like the beginning of episodes and they would have different or flash forwards at the beginning of episodes yeah. where you would have different colors to kind of like everything would have like a green haze to it or something yeah, or like more different... sepia yeah it's like that a uh, whole teddy bear thing where there's that plane crash above albuquerque yeah and um it's like that sepia I green completely forgot about that. <laughs> yeah um where it's like you don't know what it is but episode by episode it reveals a little bit more um 
one really quick thing to kind of touch on. I know we're not really talked too much of spoilers, but um, with Breaking Bad, I think one of the things that makes it work is that everything is like episodes are slightly different with all the different directors. Yeah. Um, I was just having a little look then, and I didn't realize that Brian Cranston pretty much directed like the first episode of most of the seasons, bar two. Yeah. So, and obviously you had Ryan Johnson, Ryan Johnson yeah. direct some. Um, and then there was another name that I did recognize, but I can't find it. Um, there's been loads of directors' word on it, and there's some really good ones. Yeah, a lot yeah. of I think sometimes the writers and cinematographers went on to do lots of other stuff. I apologize, my dog is barking at the door <laughs> because she she doesn't like Chris. She does not like me. She hates me, doesn't she? No, she hears your voice and gets real triggered. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't need me to. Oh, she's not happy oh. with me. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to stop recording for a second and just just sort her out. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I didn't actually sort anything out. She just stopped barking. <laughs> so um, I just stared her down. Yeah. So we. Yeah. yeah through the door. <laughs> no dogs in here. Um. Yeah. So what were we talking about? We were talking about directors and writers yeah. on Breaking Bad. So yeah. Um. Okay, yeah, I got. I, I went off on a. I went off on a bit of a tangent. Um, I we basically had a, I had a list of. Uh, I just basically wanted to talk about how I didn't know Brian Cranston directed some of these episodes. You find a lot of people that do a lot of TV, obviously, because there's so many episodes and they are constantly working with directors and stuff. They do often go on to start directing, especially the shows that they're on, mm. because like there's such a quick turnaround and stuff, and they're kind of like. Especially if they're in like seventh season or something, they've got a rapport with the studio and stuff. And like, I want to try directing. Can I direct an episode? And they'll typically give them an episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was going to bring up some examples, but there's too yeah. many of them. <laughs> so in terms of El Camino, um, what was kind of obviously you say that when there was that twist with the police officers where they weren't the police officers. Uh. Yeah, you I said like you, that. You, I thought you said you fell off at that point, though. Yeah, it was it was just after that point. Oh, okay. So like, that was the last bit that I enjoyed, like the bit where Jesse comes out from the dart with a gun. I was yeah. like, that's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it was yeah, a really cool yeah. shot. It's a very cool it shot. It looked like it was just shot on like a black screen, separate. Like, yeah, I, def- I don't think he was actually in between a load of sofas. It's really clever that bit because you actually you should notice something is wrong way before they try and put that little plug cord around Jesse's wrist mm. because um I don't know where I don't know whether this is explained later on but the bit where the guy with the mustache who Jesse catches first yeah. he says lieutenant and then to the yeah. other guy and I thought like, that what? was maybe just like a code word between the police like because yeah. they were calling each other by the names weren't they yeah and then as soon as it was like lieutenant i was like yeah. oh maybe that's like a police code word so they know that there's a hostile threat <laughs> yeah and i th- i was just thinking oh maybe he's just really suspicious because why has he not come out of that room yet um and then obviously it's because he's not actually a police officer so why would he be calling him lieutenant yeah um yeah that was a good little twist and then obviously when you put the um the plug cords around his wrist and then he's like do you not have handcuffs and then he's like oh no you're not police mm. oh shit what's going on um but yeah at that point then the whole thing moves pretty quick you've got the vacuum cleaner shop um it moves on to then jesse having to get more money for that in which he goes back he has that little shootout which is kind of cool what did you think of that just before that when he goes to get the guns from his parents house yeah he does that That was okay so i think it's probably just like the last little bit of it that i didn't like i think I was kind of like a little bit sour because I was like, why wasn't this in the series? Why is why have they had to go back and make a film of it? Maybe that's like, I was just not maybe enjoying that. I don't know. Yeah. But it, it was mostly the shootout bit with the uh, fake police and stuff like that that I didn't like. Mm. I, I, I thought it started to drag on a little bit then. But when he went back to his parents' house, I thought that was like quite a nice like moment like, you thought he was I thought he was gonna go in there to like rob money from him and stuff like that. Which he was going to do. I he, wasn't he, sure if he was going no. to or whether he went there to get the guns. Uh it's a good point. I mean maybe maybe he went there looking for money because when he pulls the guns out of the um safe safe, he's almost like surprised that that's yeah, all that's there. 
Like and, there was a nice moment in the phone call between them type thing. Yeah, and that's what I that's what I mean. Like a lot of this film is tying up the loose ends. Mm. So it's like you've got him with um Badger and Skinny Pete. Yeah. Their friendships and stuff is sorted. You've got a lot of throwbacks that kind of uh, sorry, flashbacks that fill in blanks, like um like the bit with him and Mike at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, where they're having a conversation whilst everything in Breaking Bad is going on. Uh, you've got a lot of that that fills yeah. in, which is cool. Like that, that was weird at the end as well, because like, you get a flashback to him and Walt. I think... Uh, you what, do, yeah. What were they doing at that point? I think they were just trying to make their first like big sale, weren't they? I think it was like kind of celebrating... The yeah. fact that they'd done the first cook or something, wasn't it? Or the first it, like major professional cook, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, or, or it was that the yeah, it was it was after a big event in Breaking Bad, yeah. I think. But, but they were in a motel or something, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. But like that was jarring. Like I wasn't expecting Brian Cranston to be in this at all. Yeah, you can tell he's wearing a ball cap. I was right, literally about yeah. to say that is like the worst ball cap. Yeah, because when they were doing the series, he was shaving his head, wasn't he? Yeah. But now, like he's doing loads of other stuff and he's doing loads of other films and stuff, so he's got his hair. Yeah. Like, I was like, that's ball cap, ball cap, ball cap. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> such a ball cap. Saying, right? Like, but all all this sort of stuff should have just been in the series. And it like, and been. it was weird, like, because I was like, because all the flashbacks were sort of informing what was going to happen in sort of like the next scene. Mm. And so, like, they were talking, but there wasn't anything really after that. Yeah. You had that, then didn't you have him going to Nebraska? And then you had at the end, was it the flashback with Kristen Ritter's? Character is yeah ex girlfriend yeah like that it all just seemed kind of weird like like you said it was like tying up loose ends and stuff like that like yeah. the whole thing is like that flashback ended where Jesse was like oh don't worry I'll make sure that your family get the money type thing mm-hmm. but then the next scene didn't have anything to do with no I think it's White's kind family. of it's trying to, I think it's maybe just trying to give you that whole the whole situation the thing that what the flashbacks are trying to do is help you look at those that with what was happening in the series at the time looking at that from jesse's point of view like how you have that kind of moment with him and kristen ritter's character where it's that moment of them just having like a normal conversation Mm -hmm. and stuff what you've got to remember is when that's happening in breaking bad he is a drug dealer kind of humanizes him a bit more and i think maybe if you go back if you if you dare go back and watch Breaking Bad, you know what I mean. It's a, it's a big commitment. Yeah, maybe you look at Jesse's character differently. I think I'd definitely look at Todd's character differently. Yeah, he he is an idiot. He no, he <laughs> he is he is insane. Yeah, he is like very. It really kind of gives you a, a cross of how evil he kind of is. But he's weirdly an idiot. impulsive. Like, yeah, weirdly like numbed to everything, yeah. like the housemaid, and then the whole like the bit where he's like singing in the car and he's just kind of like Jesse's just like underneath yeah. the seat and stuff. And it's, it's like he's just like kind of unhinged and he like he's treating him like a pet. Yeah, that's like that's I think it. like he's sort of oblivious to how creepy he is. Yeah, that's it. That's I think it. probably growing up with a Nazi murderer uncle mm. surrounded by drug trade and robbing houses, yeah. you probably Probably do come out a bit warped. To be yeah, fair, yeah, you probably do. <laughs> I mean, he does. He does kill that kid in Breaking Bad. Yeah, you just know? out of nowhere. Yeah, and then yeah, like the kid didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, again, like constantly pushing it over the line, mm-hmm. and then having that whole. Yeah, yeah. I think. I don't think that scene with Walter Wright really did anything. I think they just wanted to get Brian Cranston back, just so you could be like. Look, we got him back. We've yeah. got the now Oscar nominated, like, like, because mm. Breaking Bad like relaunched his career essentially. Like, yeah, he's like, oh look, we managed to get him back. From, uh, yeah, what what was it? The he did Malcolm in the Middle. Malcolm and he in did the yeah, that Power was Rangers at the same time. He did Godzilla. He he voiced most of the Power Ranger villains on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Nice, you know, in the big costumes. That's what he was doing to get by paycheck to mm. paycheck before Malcolm in the Middle mm. and stuff. Then yeah, he did Godzilla. Yeah. Then he started doing like Trumbo and like the the Oscar bait stuff. Mm. Maybe El Camino just gives you that time and world building and that whole you're not you're not having to rush this. Yeah. 
which you can clearly tell they're not rushing anything <laughs> in this film. Um, but with Breaking Bad episodes, obviously you're trying to you're trying to cram so much into the space of an hour yeah. that a lot of time those scenes and stuff where they're talking and stuff you can't fit that in. So maybe that's what El Camino is taking advantage of. Is you've got two hours to really fit in some you big things meaning. room to breathe yeah you? you can give like conversations room to breathe and you know build build emotion and stuff and yeah and i think it it works because you have all of breaking bad to go back to yeah i think so. i don't think it's that Chris is bored of Breaking Bad. Now. <laughs> no, I forced him to watch no, Breaking Bad and El Camino. No, so like, like, what I was about done. to say was like because, like I said at the beginning, like I did love this series. I think the final season. I, I I've noticed me thinking this way about lots of TV shows. They need to focus on what they need to focus on and get rid of loads of chod. Yeah, like, there's so many things where they're like, okay, we'll give you like 20 episodes. It's like, no, you only need 15 episodes. So there's going to be five episodes of filler in there. So they put in an extra plot twist, which isn't needed. This is uh, and interesting think, coming from the guy who likes the CW TV shows. I mean, they're full of chat. Well, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> I like them, but I know they're trash. <laughs> like I'm sat there watching them roll in my eyes. <laughs> Every five episodes, you get something. That yeah, you get a new plot along. twist. Yeah. yeah, like you yeah. always know it's like, right, we're at the 21 minute mark now. There's two minutes left of the episode. <laughs> Ready for a plot twist? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ready for a, a reveal that shouldn't have been revealed just yet? Just because they didn't know how to end the episode? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, like so, like, in Breaking Bad, I think the final season should have been maybe a couple episodes shorter or ended Walt's story and done this bit with Jesse. Yeah. 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 Like, just a, I, I just think, like an epilogue. Yeah, I don't think that El Camino was bad. I think maybe the bad taste that was left in my mouth from the final season of Breaking Bad maybe mm. maybe tarnished it. I think maybe if I had enjoyed the final season a bit more, yeah. if it didn't just keep going and going and going. Yeah, for sure. Like, maybe I would have been happier with El Camino. Yeah. You've not watched any Breaking, Co- uh, Breaking Call Saul. <laughs> Better Call Saul. Have Breaking you? Call Bad. Yeah, Breaking Call Bad. Better Call Bad. No. You've uh, not Better seen, Call Saul. You've no. not seen any of it. No. No. So, uh, as we... As we bring this episode to a close um we were talking about this because better call saul um uh, season two is in full swing not season two uh season five, season five. <laughs> whoa <laughs> <laughs> um i highly recommend better call saul okay it's it's got all the good parts of breaking bad mm-hmm. in terms of the shots and the cold opens and stuff it's got some characters you'll recognize some new characters that help move it along but it's different enough where it's not about, you know, Jesse and Walt's storyline. Yeah. It's about a lawyer and he's got his own problems and he's got his own backstory. And... I, I liked Mike as well, so it's got Mike in there. Yeah, hasn't it? yeah. Um, yeah. Who? Oh, Bob Odenkirk, absolutely, really, really good. Very, very good actor. And he's good in Better Call Saul. So I'd highly recommend watching that. Yeah. Um, and then maybe we will do a recap eventually when something comes out. But uh, yeah, <laughs> got five seasons to get through. Also, <laughs> the it's the penultimate series. They're ending it if, after season six, mm-hmm. which I believe they said by that point it will have had the same amount of episodes as Breaking Bad. Yeah, which because is, I which think is, the seasons yeah. are shorter, aren't they? So it's got one extra season to make up the episode count. Yeah, I think they're going to end at sixty episodes. Where I'm up to, I think I think I watched episode three. Um, it feels like it's getting there. Feels yeah. like it's getting there. So yeah, awesome. Right, cool. We'll end it there. Yeah. Uh, this was my choice for the week to talk about. <laughs> I kind of nominated this yeah. because uh, it was relevant with the whole. It's fine. It, it got me to final, uh, finally finish it yeah. all. So obviously, it's not something it's super new. But um, let us know how you feel about us going back and revisiting some stuff. Uh, Breaking Bad and stuff was a little bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. Uh, it is something we're thinking of doing, Guilty Pleasures, as a um, a series, I suppose. Yeah, so I pitched to Sam a couple of days ago that maybe next episode or maybe every couple episodes, maybe when there's a bit of a lull in releases or something, we will go and we will each pick a Guilty Pleasure of ours and we will talk about them and maybe we see which one's guiltier than the other yeah, wait, or maybe wait. like rank them like over a year on... 
on a scale we'll keep an up to date list of which one we think is guiltiest or guilty yeah. less guilty if you think breaking bad's bad you should wait and see what chris comes up with yeah, i've had some <laughs> ideas also let us know maybe with the release of the new weirdly animated pokemon movie do you want us to talk about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah cool right uh you guys know where to find us it is get real pod on instagram facebook and twitter and then our email address is get real pod uk at gmail.com. Chris is throwing his arms up in the air, no doubt to I stop was this going, from ending. <laughs> I was going to announce it at the beginning of the episode and I completely forgot. We are now live on YouTube. Subscribe to Get Real, Get Real Podcast on YouTube. All the podcasts go live on there the same time that they go live on all your podcast networks. So if you want to see... If you maybe you just at your computer and you want to listen to it on YouTube or something, do yeah. that. We'll do, um, a little, we'll, do a, we'll record a little sting before... Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll redo it okay um yeah so get real pod at uh, uk at gmail.com that's r-e-e-l uh, and you can get in touch with us there let us know what you would like to see us talk about next and where can people listen to us chris you can listen to us on apple podcast don't forget to rate us five stars and leave a review you can listen to us on spotify don't forget to follow us on there stitcher iHeartRadio, radio um, everywhere your podcasts are provided very good and next week we don't know what we're going to be talking about yet however we are not far off the release of a quiet place part two and mulan so we may do something leading up to that potentially however keep an eye out on the socials i'm sure we'll probably tease out what we're going to be recording about next thank you very very much for listening and see you later see ya